Hello, and welcome everyone to the second video in our unit on linear algebra. In this video, we'll be talking about vector spaces as a generalization of n-dimensional Euclidean space. Then we'll look at subspaces of vector spaces along with the properties of the vectors in them, namely span and linear independence. This video may seem a bit definition heavy, and a lot of things I'm going to say may seem obvious because they're second nature to calculate with vectors in R3. However, we'll see down the road when we look at function spaces and complex vector spaces that these properties aren't necessarily so trivial. First off, we'll start with some definitions. A vector space is a set equipped with two operations which must satisfy eight axioms. The two operations you'll be familiar with. They are vector addition, where any pair of vectors in the vector space can be added together to produce a third vector that is also in that vector space. And the second operation is scalar multiplication, where multiplying a vector by a scalar gives a new vector also in the vector space. The eight axioms they must satisfy are associativity of addition, where u plus the sum of v and w is equal to the sum of u and v plus w, commutivity of addition, where v plus w is equal to w plus v, the additive identity, there exists a zero vector that can be added to any other vector v in the vector space to return v, additive inverse, for every vector v in the vector space, there exists another element minus v called the additive inverse of v such that v plus minus v is equal to the zero vector. Multiplicative identity, the scalar 1 times v is equal to v. Associativity of scalar multiplication, so the scalar a times the vector bv is equal to the scalar product ab times v where a and b are scalars and v is a vector. Distributivity of scalar multiplication. Scalar a times vectors u plus v is equal to a times u plus a times v. Distributivity of vector multiplication. Scalars a plus b times vector v is equal to a times v plus b times v. Now that we have defined vector spaces, it is important to think about the concept of subspaces. The subspace W is a linear subspace of the vector space V if W is a subset of V that is itself a vector space. W must have the same operations as V, and importantly, W must contain the same zero element as V. All vector spaces are equipped with at least two linear subspaces, the entire space itself and the trivial subspace consisting of the zero element alone. For example, there are four different types of linear subspace of Euclidean 3 space. The entire vector space R3, any plane passing through the origin, any line passing through the origin, and the trivial subspace that contains only the zero vector. Vector spaces are the home to all matrix operations, as well as many other linear operations, which we'll see in the coming videos. We would like to understand how vectors within a subspace behave. The two main concepts we'll look at in this video are linear combinations, closely related to the concept of superposition, and the span of a set of vectors. A linear combination of vectors v1 through vn in a vector field v is a sum on i from i equals 1 to n of ai times vi, where the ai's are scalars. Now we want to use the concepts of vector space and linear combination to explore what the span of a set of vectors is. I'll present two different but equivalent ways of thinking about the span. First, the span of a set of vectors S in a vector space is the intersection of all subspaces that contains S. For example, we'd like to find the span of the green vector V1 and the orange vector V2. The subspaces containing V1 are the entire vector space R3, the line of points parallel to V1 that passes through the origin, any plane that passes through the origin that contains V1. Likewise, the orange vector has equivalent subspaces. Not all of the subspaces of V1 also contain V2. 
The only two that do are the entirety of R3 and the plane passing through the origin that contains both V1 and V2. The intersection of these two subspaces is the plane passing through the origin containing V1 and V2. The alternate definition is the span of a set S is the set of all linear combinations of vectors in S, given by the sum on I from I equals 1 to the number of elements in S of AI times VI, where the AIs can be any scalars and the VIs are elements in S. As we sweep across all possible AIs, we construct the span of S. Another property of sets of vectors in a vector space or subspace is that of linear independence. The finite set of vectors S is said to be linearly dependent if there exists a set of scalars, A1 through AN, not all zero, such that the sum on I of AI times VI is equal to the zero vector. The set of linearly dependent vectors in S are basically redundant when trying to find the span of S. Likewise, the set S is said to be linearly dependent if the sum on I of AI times VI is equal to the zero vector is only satisfied when all of the AI are equal to zero. For example, let's look at this set of three vectors in R2. V1 is equal to 1, 1, V2 is equal to minus 2, minus 1, and V3 is equal to 2, minus 1. To see if these vectors are linearly independent, we want to solve the linear equation A1 times V1 plus A2 times V2 plus A3 times V3 is equal to the zero vector for the AIs. Let's solve this by writing it as the matrix of coefficients times the column vector of the AIs is equal to the zero vector. We can solve this using row reduction. We get a new matrix, one minus two, two, zero, one minus three. We can rearrange this to move the third column to the right side of the equation. This system can be solved by A1 is equal to four A3 and A2 is equal to three A3 for any value of A3. So that means that these three vectors are linearly dependent. Any collection of M vectors in Rn, where M is greater than N, is linearly dependent. A corollary of this is the set of K vectors in Rn is linearly independent if and only if the rank of the matrix M, whose columns are made from the elements of S, is equal to K.